Hi, everybody. It's Russ from My Hammers 11. I hope you're all safe and well. If you're new to the channel, obviously, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell notification icon so you're made aware of any time we put new content on. Obviously, we have videos going up daily, but sometimes we post two, three times a day. So you don't want to miss any of them. So make sure you hit the bell icon so you're made aware as soon as we put new content on. We have got an incredible array of guests coming up this week, including today's guest. He played you know, 304 games for the Amers across a nine-year period. Um, it's Ian Bloody Bishop. Hi, Ian. How you doing, man? Good, Ross. And you? Yeah, not bad. Thank you. How is lockdown treating you over there? Yeah, it's a bit looser over here, mate. I, I think I've been must have been playing golf at least four times a week for the last for the last three weeks, maybe a month, something like that. Uh, the bars are back open, yeah. maybe 50, 60 percent, you know, capacity, but um, still somewhere to go after we finished on the golf course, mate. So it hasn't, <laughs> it hasn't been too bad. And, and the funny thing is, I mean, I mean, I've watched, I've watched a few of your podcasts, and I, I think it uh, was it Sam told me you're getting used to being inside. Yeah. That going out felt like I didn't want to go out, you know? You've been in for, for that long that you didn't want to go out. And then you realise how freaking stupid people are, you know? And, and I thought it wasn't so bad sitting in the house. No, know? I know what you mean. And it's nice to, in, in a weird way, it's nice that to not have it, the pressure of doing stuff over the weekend. Do you know what I mean? It's like you work, you know, I work in the office nine to five. Come the weekend when obviously West Ham, were, it wasn't a West Ham weekend. It's like yeah. we have to go out and do stuff and we can't do anything. So it's quite sort of like, huh. No pressure. No, no pressure. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But yeah, no yeah, it's, things are getting better. And obviously, you know, a couple of weeks time, we'll have some football to moan about. So we shall yeah. see. I mean, I, I actually did, that, um, I did a, a video, um, you, know, you know, for little Isla. Yeah. The, the little girl, little West Ham fan. And, and one of the uh, West Ham fans from a long, long time ago, a lady called Nicola, who used to be there when we were playing. And we sort of like, stay in touch with her a little bit, you know. Um, she's asked me to do this down a, down a beer for Isla and then nominate four people. And I ended up doing the video. I actually put my own little spin on it, you know. but. Um, after I'd done it, I went to bed. I come home and, I, and I, I actually got my son to tweet it out because the video was too long. I don't have Twitter on my computer, so it was too long for my phone. I asked my son to do it from the other website and I would, from the other um, the podcast site, the Twitter mm. account, and I would retweet it. And then I've, I've done that. And then I woke myself up about three o'clock in the morning. I was, I was paranoid. I was like, I haven't said what it was about. Oh, yeah, you just did the it video, didn't like you? Just taking the piss out of the UK, being a bar by the water. I felt being... a little bit like that. Yeah, I know. So, like, so I ended up at o'clock in the morning. I had to retweet it again. And I had, oh, I suppose you want to know what I was talking about. So, yeah, I got blind panic for a minute. That's all right, because then that's three o'clock in the morning for you. It's about eight o'clock here, so in the morning. Yeah, so I think I'm in Boston in time, yeah. Yeah, oh, how funny. I know, yeah. I know. But yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, it's great all that Isla stuff, and there's, I know Baz Cox is doing some great stuff with FIFA tournaments yeah. and stuff, and, you know, we're all just trying to trying to help out where we can, particularly now when there's, there's no football. I mean, obviously, the, you know, a few weeks we go, you know, I've got the, uh, I've got the, the Premier League directives in terms of uh, what music I have to play and stuff like that back at the ground. Oh, yeah. So, okay. yeah, so it's going to be interesting. Um, they're trying can't to. Wait, can't wait. I can't wait. I'm I'm a bit tentative. I'll be honest because it's like I'm quite. It's a bit weird. I'm quite used to not having football at the moment in a weird way. Do you know what I mean? Nothing to moan about. But just that relegation fight being frozen in front of you. I don't mm. like it. No. It's like I want to be safe. You know, I just I don't want to keep looking at it. I want it to happen whatever way, and hopefully it will happen in a good way. But West Ham and also for Bournemouth, by the way, I must say, yeah. I don't yeah. want them to go down. No. It might be a tough call, to be honest, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but, I, no, I, but I think actually the neutral thing, and, and Kevin King, um, when I was talking to Kev the other day, he, he said it was a good point. By being like, you know, empty crowds and things like that, the lower down teams are going to fancy that sort of mid-table team and think they might get something uh, I don't know we've yeah. got to play Tottenham because you know there's no animosity there's no crowd noise and actually sometimes when the yeah. crowd's on your back when you're not performing well it can have a um, you know detrimental yeah. effect to the players so definitely definitely and I think some of them will benefit from there being no crowd and that pressure 
especially yeah. in a rele relegation fight. Mm -hmm. Some of them will, you know. I mean, have you noticed, have, have you seen any of the German football? There's less dive in a play acting. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the pressure the crowd brings as well. Because, you know, the fear of losing possession and having to fake a dive or fall down just to keep possession. You know, maybe with the crowd not there, that's, that's changed it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, possibly. I mean, we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens. I've got a sneaky feeling. I mean, I I don't know what's going to happen with the rest of the season, but at the end of the day, you know, you, you, I'm believe of the adage. You know, you don't know what you've got to it's gone. And not having football, not having yeah. any football, is is worse than having football, even if it is a relegation scrap. It's still football. And yeah. um, I think people will be a bit more relieved. And then eventually, when everyone does get back to the London Stadium, all sixty thousand. That's going to be a lovely, a lovely moment because. Uh, I mean, I mean, I think we, we should take the opportunity as well to capitalise, sort of on the situation. You know, mm. it may have been a time for the for the owners to to come together again with the fans and realise, you know, how much it all means now that we've been without it. Mm. You know, and and maybe like a fresh start and and let's take it from here. You know, because unfortunately, just before the break, it sort of performed really well in the three games mm. before. You know. I think it was after the Man City game. They performed even though they lost at Arsenal. You know, so so hopefully that was the beginning of a turnaround. Yeah, and we'll see. And and exact, and, and we've got a fully fit, fit, a fully fit squad, which is very unusual for us. Said. Yeah, so God forbid everything happens, and we'll see what happens. And as you said, it it will all come out in the wash, won't it? Whatever happens, so definitely yeah. Anyway, that's how basically this channel came about. So, you know, I was a bit bored. Um, and so uh, I thought, well, there must be loads of other people who are bored, but wanted to talk about the good days, so to speak, and, and, and looking back because they had nothing to moan about in the present day. Uh, and that's what we're doing. And obviously, you know, we're talking to more and more, more players because obviously, you know, the fans are more, well, necessarily more interested about what you guys did than necessarily what Bob in the West End did. But it doesn't matter if they're famous or not famous, celebrity or not celebrity, player or not player. They're all West Ham connected. And that's what's quite nice about this. So obviously, if you, Bish, you know, uh, I must admit, you, you were one of my favourite players. Um, but <laughs> and we'll talk about why I think you're one of my favourite players in a bit. But um, obviously, you joined, you joined you know, West Ham in... December 89, um, yeah, obviously Macari brought you in and he brought in Trev and Colin Foster that same week. And obviously you went on to play, you know, over 300 games for the club. The question I always ask all West Ham ex-players is, why West Ham? Why did you stay so long, Bish? Um, it, it was notoriously a family club. It was, it was great in the dressing room. It was great out on the pitch. Although, you know, first couple of years, up and down, up and down, you know, we succumbed the the, uh, the misery of relegation with a following promotion, mm. so it didn't last too long, you know. And I, I can understand the fans being disgruntled, but for me, it was it was the the style of football, as much as anything. Once I realised how Kendall was going to sell me, mm. and Lou McCarty was interested, I, I just it took me back to the European nights at, at Upton Park with the the goals with the small stanchions and you know the muddy pitch even and and the tight ground and. And the kit, even little little things as well, you know. It was um, I just see myself fitting in there. Yeah. And someone asked the other day, didn't I feel pressure of following Paul Ince? I didn't even think like that. I didn't even think about Ince when I came here. Mm. You know, it was um, it wasn't like that. I was just a different type of player, I suppose. And I thought I've got to come and impose myself in the in in the claret and blue. And I wanted to put the shirt on. I, I really didn't want to take it off. It was it was. Uh, Disappointments when I didn't start, maybe arguments with the management. Um, you know, I had a little fallout during one season. 304 games, I think I could have made it to maybe 400. Yeah. You know, if, if I'd have stayed also and, and if I'd have kept me place a little bit in that one season where Harry and Billy, Harry had said I was 32 pounds overweight, which he swears to this day he's got in a little black book, <laughs> you know. And, and I don't know how any human being could be. 32 pounds overweight, you know? Yeah. Well, that's what they said, that they, they had me on a sort of fitness regime. Uh, I don't know whether I struggled with it, um, but it took me a while getting into that, into that team. Mm -hmm. And plus, the lads who were in were doing well. You know, Martin, Peter Butler, you know, little Robbo, and I think it was around about that time. I did end up coming back and get a few games towards the end, but I'm still, I'm still say 304, I, I should have had more. Yeah. I would have loved to have had more also. And a testimonial thing, mate, that, that year, being on the bench 23 times, only getting on the field three times. It wasn't about money for me. It was about football. 
And mm. if it wasn't Man City coming in, I probably wouldn't have left. Yeah, probably, I mean, probably yeah. Stayed. Yeah, you know, and I feel I could have fought my way back in. Mm. I, I wasn't ready to leave the, the Premier League. Don't get me wrong. Mm. I wasn't ready to leave West Ham. You know, I'd, I'd played in the Chelsea game. I think before I left, we won two one. Was it? Mm. I think I had a part in both the goals and. No, it might have been then, but we'd already decided that, you know, if another club came in, Ali would give me a free transfer and it would save him having to pay in any arse year I would have given with a testimonial and all the functions, you know. So it, it was, and then it was Joe Royal and Man City. And I didn't yeah. care what the reason they were in. It was going to be playing football and I had unfinished business. So mm. it, it was, I mean, it was sad that I never got to say goodbye properly. That mm. was the biggest thing. Yeah. No, I understand that, but I mean, you know, still those three hundred and four games. As I said, you had two, you had two, two promotions. Obviously, the relegations will go, but two promotions, uh, and obviously ninety nine and one, and obviously the the two the twenty ninety two ninety three season as well. I mean, there was so many. Obviously, you know, we've got you know, the semi final, which everyone talks about all the time, and still talks about as just the most mental fan experience of <laughs> losing 4-0 but like it was yeah. like you'd won the cup you hoisted yeah. up on your shoulders absolutely mental never seen anything like it before and, and I haven't seen anything since you know no. and I've been in some fairly big games as well you know but there was nothing like that nothing no. at all Exactly. I mean, I, I mean, I remember very vividly the 92, 93, obviously, you know, Cambridge United, Clive Allen scored that second. And then the place, I, I mean, there hasn't, I haven't seen a pitch invasion at Upton Park since then, no. since then, really. I've pictures on my phone of it, actually. Yeah. It's absolutely it. mental. And I remember vividly, like, I was the West Lower, and I remember vividly a rope ladder literally almost took my head out from the top tier, and people were literally going down the rope. Like, I don't know. I think security was a lot laxer that, that day. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you couldn't get that into the London Stadium. And it was like rope ladders. It was absolutely amazing. But as you said, I mean, the thing that comes across, and you said, that, you know, said about the fans and the passion of the fans, that's what comes across in this series and this sort of project. You know, football is almost the it's like the secondary thing to to West Ham fans it's all about the community and the family and obviously you know it's and that's so true with the players as well you know you talk to the talk to the you know, guys like Mad Dog and Kev and they talk so highly of everyone yeah. in that team that era and it seems to be a real a real sort of nice bond it was you had a special bond mate yeah it yeah was a special bond, you know? exactly don't, don't get me wrong in nine years players came and went you know yeah but the earliest part of the 90s was the you know where we where we built that we built that bond, but he said maybe it had something to do with going down together, mm. uh, you know, being in that fight together, being on the battlefield together, mm. and then having the the joy of the promotion and going through that together, you know, a couple of times. Yeah. But eventually we got it right, didn't we? We stabilised things, and uh, exactly. And had a good run up there. Yeah, and obviously you had, yeah, you, as you said, alluded to, obviously, yeah, Makai brought you in, yeah, Bonzo, and you had Redknapp as, as, as yeah, three managers under yourself. And obviously very, all three very different managements. What, what's it like when, a, when a, I mean, you've had the experience, what's it like when a, a new manager takes over? I mean, from a, yeah, just a few perspectives, not the West Ham managers, but... <laughs> I'm a good person to ask, aren't I? Because uh, when a new manager took over Man City, yeah. I mean, it lasted two weeks. <laughs> Did you and Ken the West Ham, and he only lasted three months. <laughs> so, Billy Bond, I think Billy Bond's coming in. I think obviously with with his stature and, and his reputation and mm. everything, it was easy. Um, I don't know how much he actually wanted the job. I think he was comfortable in his role with the academy, but yeah. um, you know, thrust into it. And 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 in all honesty, I think was too honest to be a football manager. Mm. That's, he, 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 you know, uh, the, the rumours that go round, what happened yeah. with him leaving. You know, I, I love Bill. That, that season we had in, in 91. And, you know, for somebody like him to, to entrust me with the, the captain's arm. Exactly. Somebody like Billy Bonds, <clears throat> who he was an example as a, as a gentleman, uh, as, a, as an athlete, to, to see him in the gym before training as the manager to see him in the gym after training and knowing that he would join in training and still be up there with the running, uh, probably top three fitness-wise. You know, you, you couldn't help but admire the man. And, mm. and just a lovely bloke, you know, for, for your manager to give you that, that, that faith and confidence. And then Monday mornings, he'd know we'd have a good weekend. He'd come in and go, how was your weekend? Uh, we'll run it off, put a bag on, run it off. 
you know. So we knew we, we'd been out and had a few beers at the weekend and it was fine with it. You yeah. do your work, yeah, enjoy yourself, you know. Yeah. And I think, I think that sort of era, so to speak, was probably the last... I mean, it's the last era, I think, where there was real characters in the game. Do you know what I mean? So, like, you know, the stories of, I don't know. Uh, I mean, Mar- Martin, uh, we, we won't say who the player was. We'll, we'll call him um, um, uh, Alan Martin, we'll call him. We'll just make up a name. He mentioned um, how there were several players, including potentially yourself, who used to eat a lot of polos um, during training. <laughs> Extra strong mints. Extra <laughs> See, see, he used to um, make sure he'd pick me up. If he knew we'd had a heavy, heavy weekend, he'd make sure he'd pick me up. And he'd have the extra strong mints in the car for me. And he'd stick about, I'd stick about five in. And I'd drive to training like his dog with my head out the window, <laughs> trying, to get, trying to get the fresh air on my face. Because he knew Harry would be at me as soon as I got there, you know? Oh, dear. Funny. We, looked after each other. we looked after each other. Yeah. That's that's what comes across. There's certain, I think there's certain sort of groups of of players. Obviously, the boys of '86 they they looked after each other, you know, and your era. And then I think that's probably you know in the last era because then you don't hear this thinking now. I think the game is almost too professional that there's no real characters in the game anymore. Do you know what I mean? Sort of like yourself, you know, our uh, you know Martin Allen, Johnny Monker, you know, Trev Morley, you know, all these types of people don't get them anymore in now and it's and it's and it's a shame it really on. it goes on you know dixie yeah. gailey different characters frankie mack you, yeah. you talk we had a squad of them it wasn't just one or two in the no. dress room like the dress room alive it was a squad of them you know and i was actually a, an adopted boy of 86 yes because whenever they have parties they they do phone me up whenever they get together if they meet in london or whatever you know i'm home i mean i think one time uh you know, Wardy, Gailey, Georgie, TC. And I remember Dev was there. And, I mean, he changed a hell of a lot, you know, from when he yeah. played. I mean, Dev has, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could still, well, Dev's, like, changed a hell of a lot. And I obviously know him and I played with him when I signed. He was there. So, obviously, he stood up and shook my hand and went, Alan Devon's here. <laughs> he, like he knows how much he's changed, you know. But it was brilliant. I always, it's always fun being with him, you know. I mean, a little bit of envy that. I wish I could have been a part of that, you know? Yeah, no, I get that, yeah. But, I mean, everyone has their own, as you said, you know, you had that, I mean, I, I mean, 92-93 was my sort of proper first season support. So, I, I was a glory hunter, you know. I, we went for rel- yeah, we went for promotion. <laughs> Fuck all's happened since, but, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, although, we won the Intertota Cup uh, in 99. Everyone forgets that. But, you know, that, that's sort of, that's my era. And, obviously, one of the reasons why you were my favourite, one of my favourite players, Bish, was... Um, famously, you did a prank on my brother at Davenant Foundation School with uh, Dave Benson Phillips. <laughs> and that was it. And from then on, I was like, oh, my God, that was it's just the most random thing that's ever happened in my, in my life, really. I don't know if I was first choice, though, to be fair. Uh, no, I think you were. I mean, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, you, you, also you're living in the area a little bit as well. But I'm sure, most oh, yeah. of you are living in, around the area. But uh, no, I remember that was such a bizarre day, such a bizarre day. And uh, yeah, Dave, bit, so he came, so Bishop pounced into my brother's art class, I think it was. And then he had to go and have a kick about with, with him on the, uh, on the, on the sort of the, the school grounds. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so funny. So funny. And my, and I, my brother texted me the other day because I said I was, I was seeing, I didn't even you. And he said, oh, I saw Bish on the last day at Upton Park at Liverpool, Liverpool Street Station. Um, and I was like, well, okay, well, <laughs> he probably saw hundreds, he probably saw thousands of people at Liverpool Street Station that day. <laughs> But uh, no, that's one of the reasons. It's you and Peter Butler. I have because uh, Peter Butler was the first ever player I met because yeah. you used to do, and you would never do it nowadays, but the Junior Hammers used to do birthday parties at the school, at the, yeah. the ground, and a player would turn up. Yeah. That yeah. Would, would never happen nowadays. Absolutely never no. happened nowadays. No, so. Potter's quality, mate. You know what? He's, he's, one of them, he's one of them players that didn't give himself enough credit. Mm. You know, he was actually a better player than. He says he was, you know what I mean? He thinks he was just a little Yorkshire Terrier, the ferret. that used to go and win things for us and give us the ball and let us do the, the magical stuff. But he was better than that. Yeah. And you know, I still I stay in touch with Butts. Yeah. But by Twitter, and, you know, every now and again, the odd phone call. Yeah. And I've asked him to come on my podcast. I think he's going to come on mine a little bit later. Well, I've got him. I've, I think, I mean, to me, 
I'll, I've got him in a couple of days' time, so I'll uh, I'll say, yeah, yeah. We'll say, oh, yeah, when, when you get on Bishop's podcast, because obviously you run the uh, five pints in with Ian Bishop, don't you, as a podcast, which is yeah. really good fun, really good fun. Yeah, he's yeah. got some stories. He's yeah. a, he's a good life after the game, you know. Yeah, no, I get. Yeah, yeah. I mean, our, I mean, um, I mean, Martin, Martin Allen mentions how he turned up first day in his high tech boots. And uh, everyone was like, who the fuck is this guy? And then, like, literally 10 minutes later, 10 country, crunching tackles, they went, all right, yeah. he's in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so, so in terms of what we do for the, for the sort of the project, we sort of do our Hammers 11. Now, we're not going to do a specific Hammers 11 for, for Bish because Bish is too much of a nice bloke, basically, and doesn't want to offend all his teammates. You can see, he, you can see they still talk to each other. I don't want any, any blocked numbers or people being blocked on Twitter. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that today. So what we're going to do instead, Bish, is, is talk about the areas a little bit. You know, So we'll talk about the goalkeepers and defenders. You don't have to pick anyone, but just you know, go through some of the, obviously, the players you worked with. Been, because that's the story everyone wants to know is, is the players anything funny anyone you can stitch them up oh, look, I, think, I think Ludo and Dixie probably speak for themselves you know? yeah 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 of course they do I couldn't, I couldn't really offend anybody or upset anybody by choosing them to because they probably agree with me anyway but <laughs> you know, when you when you look at the, the lads at the back you know having been there with Slav who was an, an international and you know Alvin and Gailey who, who for me when I got there they, they took care of me mm. You know what I mean? I, I, and took care of me as as a footballer, not not just the, the person. I mean, Alvin with me being a scouser obviously helped. Gailey with a sense of humour, you take two streets away because he's just a piss taker, you know? And and I love all that. And they probably didn't know I was like that unless they'd heard stuff. But, but you know, you've got to give as good as you get. And, and Gailey's non-stop. So, but, but for me, more than anything, the both of them as footballers, um, as a midfield playmaker, you need to have the ball. Mm. And you need to earn their trust and respect for them to go and get it for you, you know. And and, and Alvin would tell me at times that <clears throat> I got myself in trouble by coming back deep to support them for me to get it out of trouble, you know, mm. to help them to get it out of trouble. And I would show for it back there and sometimes get caught, maybe. I don't know, you'd see the odd goal, whatever. And he said, well, you're just getting asked, well, I don't know any, any other way to do it, you know. Uh, it's it's just in you, and then and then trusting them, who both had great touch, you know, uh, good passes of the ball themselves. Gailey could could have slotted into midfield, uh, you know, and been now holding midfield player, yeah. and then he probably wouldn't have got exposed with his pace as much. But yeah. you know, I wasn't the fastest, um, but they both read the game well. Yeah, you know, not a lot of pace back there when they both played, but nobody really got beyond them mm. because they read the game so well, you know. Um, and then we're willing to play and, co- and comfortable getting the ball, you know, relaxed. You know, and, and, and don't get me wrong, Upton Park could be hostile and frightening. And, and I don't mean just for the away players, you know, because many players you talk to from other teams will talk about it and, and say, oh, I hate going there. It's, it's you know, it's, it's a cold, proper cauldron. Yeah. But it was like that for the, for the home players. You have, to, you have to have big stones, mate, to, to go out there and keep doing... Doing what you do, you know, keep looking for the ball, keep wanting the ball. That was one of the things. Look, I'd have bad days, I'd have bad games. I may, I may give the ball away, but I'll still go looking for it. Mm. And Alvin and Gailey were like that in, in the line behind me, mm. you know, which, which I needed. I needed, you know. And, and a lot of the time, I'd just be sitting in front of them, you know, when, when yeah. things, and they'd be, they'd be organizing, yeah, they'd be talking all the time, constantly. We didn't, it didn't matter who was captain, I think, back in those, those days. We were all leaders and talkers and organisers, you know. And really, two, two lads, you could have a riot on the field and it'd be done and dusted. You know, you'd have your arguments about, about the game and then it'd be done and dusted, you know. I mean, I used to, um, I used to go to Alvin all the time. We'd, uh, we'd play this game in the gym where the two semicircles at the end of the five-a-side pitch, you'd have to chip the ball into the without bouncing and you'd score points. And we played for a bit of money, like, you know, after training, instead of going to port, but going home, we'd go in there and have a little gamble. And then it got to, OK, now you've got to control it and hit it back without the ball stopping. And then once we'd done that, you'd control it and you'd have to hit it back on a half volley. So, and, and Alvin had more ability than, than people think. Mm. You know, he could strike a ball really well. But I would beat him more often than not. And then I would wind him up. 
And then on a boys' day out, we would um, play pool. And I could play a little bit of pool. So I'd say to him, look, we play for a fiver. And then I'd beat him. He'd go, oh, you know, I'm ne never going to beat you. I'd say, OK, if I put the black and you've got one ball left, you win. And then I would beat him again. This would go up if you've got two balls left, if you've got three balls left. And then, so I used to go with them. And then we, we went up to Stirling on one pre-season tour. And I'm not really that good at table tennis, but there was a table tennis table. Not much else to do. So we were waiting in line. We played one game up to 11, winner stays on. And, and Alvin's quite good. But I've got on and then, and then I've come on with Alvin. And I'm just doing backhand defence, just getting it back. And he's missing shots, he's going for I'm just getting it back. Boring as hell. And I end up beating him. And he was fuming. So I'm winding him up again, trappy. Yeah, I'll beat you at the footy game, beat you at a pool, beat you now, beat you at table tennis. And he's going, no, no, I'm waiting. And he waited till about five more lads come on. And I stayed on, I won. And as I came round to him again, I'm not playing no more, <laughs> walked off. <laughs> He'd waited all that time. And he was absolutely fuming. Oh, and we were in a, yeah, we were in the pub in, near where he lives, in the ship. And I think it was this ship, or the one across the road. They don't open the windows, like, you know, they fold an open window. So it was open onto the street. And he was having a little game pool, having a couple of beers, and Albert's gone, oh, I've got to take the kids to the, to the pictures. It's like in the afternoon, maybe three, four o'clock. I've got to take the kids to the pictures. And uh, I mean, come on, can't you just phone your missus? All the boys are here, phone your missus. He's going, no, I can't, I can't. Anyway, without me knowing, I'm standing there holding the pool cue, playing a game, thinking it was Hutch. Next thing, you know, he's, he's finished his beer. He's cracked me on the head, jumped out the window and legged it, right? I threw the pool cue down. Now I've legged it after him. Belly full of beer, though, you know? And I've got problems if I can't catch Alvin. Anyway, I thought, <laughs> I thought, sorry, I know where he lives. I'll just walk. I'll break into his house. So, anyway, I'm walking around the corner up to where the street is. Next thing, he's being marched back by two fellas. There was two plainclothes policemen sitting outside, seeing him jump out the window and leg it, went after him. <laughs> They've got his arms up his back, and I'm walking towards him, and he's looking at me, and he's gone, fish, fish, tell him, tell him who I am, tell him, tell him it's okay. I went, never seen you before in my life, mate. Carried on walking. <laughs> he was fuming. He used to love minding him up. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, that's the Brilliant. thing. That's, that's sort of, yeah, as you said, you're like, you know, and... If he likes being you, he like winding you up, and you're gaily, he just winds everyone up and never switched off. And as a twosome, they were—I mean, they were unstoppable. You know, they—they they really are when they're in their days, absolutely yeah. unstoppable. And then you have got the difference of them two, like very, and then, and Julian, who by all accounts is a very sort of quiet man, so to speak. Um, his tackles and, made the noise. Yeah, exactly. And his tackles were when he crossed over the line. He was a different person by all accounts, but it seemed to complement each other. Quite well. Yeah, but you've, you've got to really get to know Julian. Yeah. He's, he's the, one of the kindest people you'll come across in your life. Uh, he's not, he's, you know, he, he doesn't go out looking for, looking for problems. We always mm. knew. And we did have a couple of run-ins, you know, in nightclubs and stuff. And he's always the first there. If you knew, if you, knew you, were out, you were out with him, like on a field, if you knew he was there, you, you felt confident and comfortable. You know what I mean? It was... You'd always have an ally, you'd have somebody. It would always, you know, he'd be first at it. So, well, I mean, I shared the room with Julian for maybe two and a half, three years, and he was great. You know, I'd take him half a bottle of Jack Daniels for a Friday night so he could sleep. And I'd get myself four cans of Guinness and we'd have a little drink in the room. Like some people took sleeping pills or whatever. Yeah. We just yeah. had a little, little stuff. He'd always be the best player the next day, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Very so true. He'd drink the bottle, he'd drink the bottle neat. <laughs> It's and when, you, when, you watch him, when you watch him on the field bombing up and down and then you're seeing him having a bag of crisp and a can of coke at half time or something, you know, he it, 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 it defied it really, Yeah. you know, he's his own man and, and I love him for it. Yeah, exactly. And, and I was... He, was a, he was an example of the way he played. He wasn't a mm. vocal captain, mm. but he led by the, way he, by the way he played and he trained exactly the way he played. Mm. Yeah, Kicking out of everyone, <laughs> and obviously not bad golfer as well. So, oh no, no. I thought you know uh, he'd have given him more of a go because uh, he was. I think he was scratching the end, was he? Yeah, 
something, something like that. Yeah. Like that. Johnny Monks is the same. Yeah. Johnny yeah, Monks. well, that's... You had some nice golf. Well, I think from Chadwick back to Loughton, or whatever. You had a couple of nice golf courses anyway to go to. You got Dayton Boys and Hainault and stuff yeah. like that. So, yeah. Well, yeah, I, lived, no. I lived on the I lived on the fourth green at Chigwell. Oh, did you? The fourth green was right outside my garden. Yeah. So half an hour before it went dark, I'd go out and play the fourth and the fifth. Come back up the fourth. <laughs> Tell you, what. Do you remember? Do you remember the chairman at the time, Martin Keynes, because uh, my garden was elevated, so you looked down onto the green. And it just sit, used to sit in the garden of a weekend or whatever. And then Martin Cairns came up with three of his, his obviously fellow members. Yeah. And I've gone, no, oh, chairman. <laughs> He's gone, oh, I must have turned around and gone, oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> I've gone, do you want a drink? He went, oh, yes. I wouldn't mind a drink. I'm a bit past. When he got a six pack out of the garage. <laughs> yeah. <in> the... <laughs> there we go. Some orange juice or something. <laughs> he was six pack. Oh, brilliant. Oh, so funny. So, obviously, you know, those, those are the sort of defenders, we'll say. We'll, we'll talk about midfield. Now, obviously, you had, you've already mentioned a few of them. You know, obviously, Mad Dog, you know, Monks, you had uh, I mean, Pete, can we, Pete Butler. Can we, can we go to Timmy Breaker, can you? Yeah, of course we can. Yeah, 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 of course we can. Potsy, you know, whether yeah. he was right back, whether he was centre back. This is why it's so difficult. Yeah. This is why it's so difficult. And it's not just hurting people's feelings or, or their new friends, it's, it is really tough to do it. You yeah. know, it's, they, they had their different qualities and, and I couldn't say one was better than the other. Yeah. Do I go by how long I played with players or how good they actually were mm. when you played with them, you know? I mean, like I said to you earlier, it's like asking your mum and dad who your favourite child is. Yeah. And look, even to the extent of, you don't send me the players that haven't picked me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I I figured it out. You appeared. You have appeared. You have appeared in fifteen uh, percent. Considering how many players have been around from the mid sixties to now, fifteen percent of of our Hammers Elevens have That's featured amazing. you. Yeah. But look, you know the good thing is, it is nice to know that you've had an impact. Of course. You know, from your, on your peers, you know, mm. um, it, it was it wasn't. I, I wasn't. You know, it wasn't great seasons every season. No. But I'd like to think that they knew even in the bad times that I was there, you know? Yeah. I wasn't just, I wasn't just like your, your flashy playmaker. I could actually do the work as well. And it probably doesn't look like, like that from the side. Or I never believed it did, you know? I, I used mm. to hear whispers about, I pass sideways too often. I don't get my foot in enough. You know, we, you go out and you're in amongst fans, you know? And you... Mm. It, it's because I always did. I always went for a beer after the game. Mm. I always went in my local at least because I feel if you do it when you win, you've got to go and face the music when you don't. True. Because you know? people want answers. And sometimes you can, you can say something to make them realise that, okay, they are just human. You know, it's not just looking at somebody out on the field and, and never having a connection with them. And maybe what I was saying rang true to them. Or mm. maybe I just said, oh, I had a shiter today. You know, and, and, and they'd like prefer your honesty. Yeah. But there was games. Look, look, a lot of players lived and died by, by their scores in the paper. Mm. And I remember looking at sometimes, you know, I wasn't at eight. I was a five. Or, you know what I mean? Or, I'm yeah. not a five. I played out my skin yesterday. So, it's all about people's opinions. Um, I mean, getting back, to, getting back to Timmy, I always talk about Timmy and Dixie when mm. they talk about the modern fullback. Mm. They bombed on for fun, didn't they? Dixie, yeah. 11, 12, 13 goals in one season. Yep, took goals for one penalties, but, it, but even if it's eight or nine, for a left back, mm. Timmy used to get crosses in with balls across. And he was fit. You know, the likes of Potsy and Kenny Brown was, was unfortunate maybe that there was a Timmy breaker. Yeah. And, and, and when they did come in and play, every bit was good. Yeah. You know, for different things. But that's when you, when you bring, when you come down to it, it's the choice of a manager and you can't play everybody. Um, but you know you can rely on people mm. if something goes wrong with somebody. And I think we had that at the back yeah. throughout the years. Um, you know, even not, not mentioning what a solid job Mark Reaper did for us. Yeah. What a job Fozzie did when he was playing. You know, and, and even now I'm thinking I've left anyone out. <laughs> you know, it, it's, I mean, Slav for me was at, at the back was... Was great, you know. You, 
he, he had an aura about him, to, mm. to be honest with you. And, and was a football and, and did have confidence in you. Although he played with some of the best people, players in the world, you know. He, he, when you sat and talked football with him, he, he knew what he, was, what he was talking about. And, yeah. you know, he could, he could tell you something that you probably didn't recognise about yourself. Mm. And, and it would, would help, you know. Yeah. Um, going, you know, going into midfield, it, when, when you're looking at, I know you've been doing like a, a natural 4 4 2. Yeah. Um, it, it changes, Bish, who I talk to, you know. I, I mean, the older generation, I mean, I've had to learn what a left half was. And, you know, inside foot, fuck knows, fuck knows. <laughs> yeah. Five up top, yeah. like the old Stanley Matthews on the right. But we learned, no, I mean, look, the thing about Keeney and Chopper, mm. obviously Dev was coming to the very, very end before he went to Watford. So I really didn't get to play with him that often, you know. Uh, but Chopper and, and Keeney, you just, as a midfield player, you didn't need to look. You'd have a sense and know where they were, where they wanted you to put it. Mm. So, especially when things got tight in there, that was your outlet. That was your outball, you know. And, and it also, because they did hug the touch lines, it, it opened things up in between because the fullbacks didn't know whether to go close. Mm. Because they were two of the type of players that if you gave it to feet and they went at people, the fullbacks would be in trouble. And then what you'd find is they'd drop off, uh, they'd get tighter, and then the, the space was in behind. I think Chopper had a little bit more pace than Kev. Not that Kev was slow. So once you did put it in behind, and it was, uh, I mean, it, look, you, you're feeding them centre forwards that we had. There's going to be goals, you know. Yeah. It was always exciting when Leeds yeah. or drops. You're it right. was always exciting. And I think that's the biggest thing about the West Ham fans. If you played the brand of football that they knew we could, mm. And, and we, we had a good work ethic, and they would accept a loss, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Still not happy. I don't mean that's the, the accepting of losing, but you know, accept it as long as you gave your all and you played it the right way. They'll still say it today. You, yeah. you played it the right way. You know, we, we always try to play attractive football. Mm. You know, Billy really encouraged yeah. that. Harry encouraged that. You know, and, and look, when you, when you think of the, mid, the midfield players, uh, Johnny, Pete, Peter Butler, you know. I mean, look, even little Robber when he came in wide, little yeah. tricky little fella that made things happen. Just a slight man, you know, but, but never shaked away from anything. Ran at defenders, you know, bigger defenders who mm. kicked lumps out of them. But, um, you know, being in there with Martin was a little bit different than being in there with Monks because Martin had a, more of an eye for goal. And, and in a natural 4-4-2, I felt the responsible one because he would bomb on and someone had to sit. Sure. And I felt a lot of the time, plus also when it was with Martin, he knew I liked to come deep and pick things up and start things off. So it gave him the chance to creep forward a little bit, you know, and maybe get a little run on somebody. Yeah. Because he, 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 was a, he was a goal scorer as well. He could finish, yeah. you know, two good feet, you know, get stuck in. Johnny was, Johnny was different for me. I mean, I love playing with Monks. Um, I respected his game so much. He was sort of, you know, if we, if we did go for a pint after training, because we, we live close as well, it would be like the Mutual Admiration Society. <laughs> oh, you're the best player I've ever played with. No, you're the best player I've ever played with. Oh, you do this and do that and you're too far. I said, well, you are and all that. And, well, he was nuts. He was absolute nuts. Absolute nuts. I mean, I can say that. Amongst the gang of nutcases, it was nuts. <laughs> Martin was eccentric and nuts. Can you imagine what our Christmas parties are like? That's, that's what I mean. It's like all. I mean, that's the thing. It's like he had great, he was unbearable. It was the second best day after staying up fighting the relegation battle. Yeah. If we'd won that game, that would only beat the Christmas party. You know, <laughs> you look forward to it. I mean, unlocked. I mean. Times changed. We, back then, you know, we all liked the pint. And the fact was, we loved each other off the field. Yeah. There was no bickering and, and little gangs and cliques and mm. whispers about people, you know. Um, and, then, and then even when Mike Marsh came, and you imagine me, Monks, Marshy in there, who's going to get the ball? You know, I mean, that was always the same with me and Monks. Why do you need a ball winner if you don't give the ball to them in the first place? Yeah. So it was a case of the positive outlook was, Let's play first. 
you know, and Monks could get his foot in as well. He wasn't he wasn't shy of getting a book and was he? No, uh, no. <laughs> a lot of that as well. Yeah. And I always remember particularly towards towards the, the latter end of, of Monks's Monks's career at Upton, but you know, he was a sub quite a bit and that was almost like a new a new sort of sense of material, you know, jockeying the linesman. I think once he pulled the linesman's shorts down, if I remember. And so it's almost like this new lease of life. I mean, you knew he was just going to come on and get a book in. You know, people, have, fans have said, you know, we, when he used to come on, we used to count in seconds. You know, how long is it going to take? Uh, yeah, he was going to get booked. Yeah. Well, you look, look here, it was the linesman's shorts that came off because yeah. most didn't have his clothes on very often. <laughs> right well, yeah. Right. We couldn't do it now because obviously there's you know, female linesmen and, and lineswomen rather and lines people and yeah, it'd be a hell of a you can just imagine what would happen now. It's just thing, it's that whole sort of that whole era. But um I mean, yeah, it must have been absolute I mean, if you was a quiet lad going into that change chat rooms. Has anyone said the story about him painting the line with his head? I've heard about it, but not from the yeah. not from the from your yeah, they, were, they, were, they were training. They, we were training. They were they were doing the lines on the pitch, and the, the fellow was there with the paint bucket. And that he goes and he dips his head in the bucket, and then proceeds to run along like this wobbly line, painting on all fours with with nothing on, painting this wobbly line with his head. He's got paint in his head. It's just <laughs> and then he trained like that. Oh God, he trained. Training like it. Yeah, the the managers just looked at him and and went, "Oh, it's monks." Yeah, you know, it's monks. They knew what he was like. That's that's what that's that's what Martin was saying. He's like people like Kevin Keane and stuff. They'd watch you lot just being not silly boys, but but being silly, and they yeah. would just he would just look in and go like tut, and then just like giggle to himself as he and Potsy as well, just like laughing Potsy, to himself. Potsy and Timmy, Potsy and Timmy Breaker. Yeah, they were the silent, they were the silent assassins. <laughs> you no, know, I mean Kev didn't really come out that often. He didn't drink. Yeah. Timmy and Potsy like the pint. But didn't want to be seen as they were us, you know what I mean? But yeah. whenever you turned around, whenever it was great, when you turned around, they were standing there with this big grin on the face. Massive grin on the face. Like, they loved watching everybody else do it, you know? Yeah. It's, it's well, like... What's, it's what's, like the... What's, what's his testimonial do? Yeah. Secrets, right? Me and him had decided that <clears throat> we were going to have a couple in the afternoon. Like we had to be in secrets for about 10 o'clock to meet up with everybody. So me and Potsy have uh, gone for a couple in the afternoon. I've only got him drinking a bottle of K-Cider and a bottle of Diamond White, which one is 9.2%, the other is 9.3% in the pint glass. And obviously because it's sweet, that's what we were drinking. We must have had about 12 of them, maybe, on top of the pints that we had. Anyway, his, his missus was pregnant at the time, so... Eve turned up at Secrets, absolutely scalloped, for the do itself. I've walked him in, we've gone up to the first bar where his, his missus was standing, and he's puked up all over the bar. <laughs> this is testimonial do. Anyway, his missus is fuming at me, absolutely fuming at me. I, I'm, I mean, I'm drunk, so it's bouncing off me. So yeah. um, She gets the bouncers to carry him out. So he gets carried out, she brings the car on the front, the bouncers put him in the passenger seat, put his seatbelt on. She, she comes around to get in the driver's seat. By the time she's in the driver's seat, I've got him back out again, carrying him back into the night. <laughs> it sounds like, a, like something from the Hangover movie or something like that, doesn't it? It's like, walks him in, no straight back out again. That was every weekend. Oh, Honestly. that's mental. Absolutely mental. So... Obviously, we've, 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 we've sort of done the midfield a bit. We've done the strike. We've done the defenders, done the keeper. Yeah. Strikers. Now. Okay. So, so this is where my dilemma is, look. Yeah. I've got Trevor Morley, Frank McAvenny, yeah. Tony Cotty, Clive Allen, Marco Boogers. <laughs> Mar- Martin tells a story about Marco Boogers, and yeah. he ruined with him for it, like, you know, and how weird he yeah. was. But. but this is what I'm saying. Like, how do you choose two? Of them for yeah. anyway, and that's without big Johnny Artson and Kit. Y- you know, it's yeah, no, totally. I mean, it's it's, it's a gen, it's a generational thing, isn't it? So it's like for the fans, for the fans, it's different because obviously there's there's players, but yeah, from, as you said, from a player's perspective, I totally get it. And as you said, they're all different. They could all fit into the team for different reasons, couldn't they? 
look, I've been I've been with Clive at, at Man City. Yeah. Obviously, he's very bad. Is he? He's forty nine goals at Tottenham. Uh, uh, finishing wise, I'd say TC and and Clive mm. uh, as finishers, natural finishers. You know, mm. Frank and Trev could could conjure something up and and did other things. You know, Frank would get in the channels for you and 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 Trev would hold things up and and throw his body into things that you 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 wince at. You know, like Sammy Julian. You know, yeah. I mean, we used to call him Nudge because. He had this dead man's carcass, you know, that was immovable. And it looked like one as well, to be honest with you. Weird shaped man, but um, <laughs> obviously a great friend of mine, you know. And, yeah. and, and similar with TC and Frank in different ways, you know. You know Frank was me, was me party animal friend when, when we went to the West End. And, you know, me and Trevor would head down the East End sometimes, go to the Isle of Dogs or to see me and mate Mark Newson who played for Fulham and we were teammates at Bournemouth. Yeah. Big West Ham fan. <clears throat> Problem was his brother was Millwall, so we'd go in some areas and it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be friendly, and it wouldn't be until about six pints that I'd start chirping back at them. <laughs> but but you know for for a different reason. I mean one time with Frank. I mean it was, it was I I actually seen his debut for Scotland. I was in Glasgow with a mate, staying at my mate's house, and we went to see I think it was Scotland Australia, and I don't know if I ever told him that. But he's think the little ball over the keeper like he scored on his debut thing. Yeah. If I if I remember rightly. Australia, I think it was. But we I think it was his last game, Forrest at home, wasn't it? And he scored a hat trick. He came on all yeah. the time, scored a hat trick, right? And somebody's gone down injured, and me and Frank are standing there, our arms around each other talking. And then after the game, my brother and my next door neighbour came to me and went, I Should have heard what one of the fans said about you. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, Well, I can't remember who was injured. He said, but I think it was Mark Crossley, the goalie or something. Uh, he said, when you and Frank, Frank were talking, they said, oh, look at Bishop and McAvenny. They're probably talking about where they're going to go after the game. And that's exactly what we were talking <laughs> about. Oh, brilliant. Well, it's sad to see him go, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's the same as yourself, Bish. You know, you don't, you know, I think you, you don't get a, feel like you've had a proper opportunity to say goodbye to the fans, particularly, you know, nine years you were there. Um, it's the same with Macca and it's the same with a lot of players, unfortunately, is it? Like in the modern day, James Collins never really got to say goodbye to the fans, so to speak. We sort of knew he was leaving, but he didn't really know. And I think it, it's, it's sad, but obviously, you know, things like this and, you know, you do loads of, loads of these types of things, you know, there's certain players who, who are still still around in sort of in in fans' minds and hearts, you know. So it's like, and also in person, if you go to the games, I think you'll find yeah. that many of us come back. You know, mm. I mean, it's a long way for me to come, but but I do come back. And when I do, I mean, I got so many pictures, you know, Georgie Paris and Ludo and Gailey yeah. and you see, and even Wardy, you know, me and Wardy and Trev going in, going in opposite directions. I, I knew Wardy from. My time at Everton, actually. Yeah. Not knew him, knew him. I was just a kid, so I didn't really befriend him in that sense. And then, you know, he had his time at Oldham and what have you. And um, coming opposite ways, didn't really... But well, we knew the same people in Liverpool, sort of thing. And mm. then Wardy now, if, any, if anybody, Wardy is the one that lets me know when they're all getting together for the 86 stuff. You know, I mean, the other lads will let me know. TC always sort of... But Wardy will probably be the first. And I didn't play with him, you know? Yeah. I didn't get a chance to play with him at City. He didn't get a chance to play with him at West Ham because of the transfer, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's a great, great kid. I mean, them, them boys are characters also, you know? Yeah. They must have had a ball. Not in the way that we did, the next generation sort of thing, crossover, but I'm sure they had a good time as well, you know? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they did. But it just seems, you know, I think, again, as you said, it's a, it is a generational thing. You know, I am i wasn't around, I didn't really, I wasn't part of the fans in 86. You know, you, Martin Allen, Monks, yeah. you know, then further, that, that was my era. So it's like, you know, I, I hide, you know, obviously as a club, they, you know, 86 was, was, hasn't been replicated since. But for me, it's 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 about you. It, it, it's it's I'm you're my ear, if that makes sense. And that's, and that's what comes across. Obviously, people who are younger, you know, some people, you know, might might not have heard of you and Bishop, you know, if they of certain younger age. Um, uh, there are people out there, Bish. I know. I know. I'm just surprised that group wasn't on the front of the papers more <laughs> often. You know, and that's good the cover thing. Up. Yeah, good cover ups. 
Yeah, <laughs> you can't from me. <laughs> but that's the thing. I mean, and that's what's great. And you know, and I, I really appreciate. I don't want to take you up for much, much longer because I know you're. You know, it looks quite nice. It looks not too bad weather out there at the moment. It's looking, over, yeah. yeah. It's that time of season, though. You're getting you're getting a little bit of thunder and lightning and pouring down rain for about half an hour, and then the sun comes back out, and within 20 minutes you wouldn't even know it rained, you know. Really, it's like that. Yeah. That's amazing. Bish, look, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much for your time. I, I appreciate it, particularly, obviously, you know, over there. And um, obviously, thank you to everyone for watching. Um, obviously, share, like, subscribe, you know what to do. And uh, and for me and Bish, take care, buddy. Stay safe and see you all soon. See ya. Right. Thanks.